Hi, everyone. So glad you came. This is going to be a really uh, fascinating talk. So um, I started, I was a client of Carl, I think it was almost 20 years ago. And uh, I couldn't understand how I got the change I was getting. And there, it was, there was some magic. So he said, take the courses. So I took what then was foundations and then uh, advanced and then masters, and I still couldn't understand, right? Because in his sessions, he was doing something, I couldn't track it, he was doing something different that, that I couldn't do. No matter, and, and uh, you know, I'm not, I'm pretty intelligent. I was right, taking notes, I was asking questions. I totally exasperated uh, <laughs> him and all the TAs because I kept asking questions. And um, I couldn't track it. So I took the courses again and again and again. And I'm still doing it. And then I thought there's only one way that I'm going to understand what he's doing. And that is, if he writes a book, and I help him write it, and I'm, I'm a professional writer, um, then I can ask him questions. <laughs> <laughs> and he's stuck, he has to answer them. <laughs> the truth comes out. And so we did that, and then there was still stuff that didn't make sense, that I couldn't track, because the book is actually pretty Newtonian. So then I took holographics, and I took it again, and I took it again, and something started making sense. But then I asked Carl all sorts of questions, and aha, so this is what he's doing. Now it makes more sense. So today, we're going to see not only what he does uh, from the Newtonian level, but also the more quantum stuff he does. That's very hard to track, but it has incredible results. For me, um, it's changed my life. So even though some of these things may seem really off the wall, weirdo. I'm telling you, it worked. Here I am, the poster girl. So with that, I hope you enjoy this. I know you will. Um, here's our wonderful mentor and teacher, Carl Buchheit. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Good evening. Well, thank you for coming out for this evening's presentation in this really marvelous place with, uh, as far as I can tell so far, really marvelous people. Thank you for coming. What we're going to be doing this evening is kind of a quick tour through two versions of reality as they are experienced and as we work with them in the, in the body of knowledge and the transformational toolbox that we call transformational NLP. We're going to be working with, and I'll be talking more about this in just a moment, kind of regular world reality in which we are all here by choice. We are all here by choice in our meat suits, right? Which are, if you want to come be physically human, you have to acquire a meat suit. Everybody gets one. And as long as you have it, you're physically human and there are certain things that pertain to the experience of being physically human. And we're going to be working with doing some, 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 some transformational NLP change work, which is about revealing some things that we're never going to be able to get to by just a process of introspection or even the most sophisticated conversational or talk therapy doesn't get us access to what we'll show you this evening. We'll show you this, I think, truly remarkable capacity we have because of some people who've developed some very beautiful things over quite a few years now, to get almost instantaneous access to the events that go on internal, internally for us in our internal experience that produce 
our experience of ourselves, what we call identity, and our experience of the world that that identity lives in and interacts with a whole lot of other identities. So the first part of this evening is going to be reality-based, so to speak. It's going to be remarkable, but it's quite reality-based. The second part is where we're going to transition off into the domain that, as Ellie mentioned, is called quantum, or the non-local domain. And we'll be able to show you a bunch of things that are a little bit harder to describe and a little bit harder to actually demonstrate because they're not going on in space and time. But this is one of the things I would like to emphasize for this evening. We're going to be working with local and non-local realities. And another theme for the evening is the mystical aspects, the mystical characteristics of transformational neurolinguistic programming. Now, for me, the entire experience is mystical. Right? The physical reality part is entirely mysterious and mystical. We come, we come more and more and more over time to understand it and to be able to work with it, but it's still entirely amazing. And then when we go to the non-physical domains here this evening, um, I hope to be able to just put mm, some experience out into the space for you so you can have some sense of, of what we're doing there. This graphic, just by way of getting started, This is a graphic from the 19th century. And I, 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 I select it and I like to use it because it has a very nice reality here. You can see that, if you can see my pointer there, right? It's a very lovely world. And here is our every person who's popping their head outside of that reality to have a different experience. As, as the graphic kind of indicates, this is another world out here. So th this is one world. This is another world. One of these worlds gives rise to the other, and then the one that was just given rise to informs and changes the one on the outside. We'll come back to that again and again and again this evening. There are a couple of things I want to say right at the beginning about this experience of being human. There are things that at NLP Marin we, we take as presuppositions. We can't prove them. We can't give you evidence for them except the evidence that you might have in your own experience. But there are about three of them, if I can remember all three. One is that if we didn't want the experience of being human, we wouldn't be here. All right? So a lot of what I'm going to be talking about this evening involves the experience that our nervous systems create as they do their jobs of keeping us alive in a world that if you are a nervous system, if you are the nervous system of a creature, our creature self, this world is not necessarily that hospitable. Right? Our nervous systems are evolved to keep us alive and safe in a not so safe world. That's their job. So even though being human is, gets, gets to be so complicated, we presuppose that being human is not a fallen condition, right? That we know what we're doing. Even, and may, maybe most especially, when it completely seems like we have no idea what we're doing, which for all of us is a lot of the time. The third thing that I would just like to observe on behalf of us all is that being human is not easy. It's complicated business. How complicated has your experience of being human been today? I mean, I, and I, I don't just mean with schedule and freeway and traffic and all of those things. I just mean the entire experience of being one way or another kind of at odds with yourself about this or that in the course of the day, right? In this very, very beautiful place with this kind of really lovely audience, I can talk about the higher intentions and objectives of being human, and I know that that experience is very well shared in the room. I can also talk about the so-called lower, which is not really lower, of course, it's just the physical part of being human. The objectives there are different than the objectives higher up. This is going to be one of the themes for the evening, that interplay between our higher intentions and what our creature selves are designed to do which is to stay safe in a not necessarily hospitable world. 